Let's start off with looking at a platelet. So a platelet is a very important part of the blood clot. It's like the brick in a wall. And platelets, if they don't adhere to each other, aren't going to form very good uh, clots for us. So the glycoprotein 2B3A molecule is central to the function of a platelet. You can see here, I have a picture of a platelet next to me. And you can see in blue the glycoprotein 2B3A molecule, which is also called the alpha 2B beta 3 molecule in Europe allows that platelet to adhere to the collagen substrate of any particular tissue. The other thing that this glycoprotein 2B3A molecule allows us to do is adhere to other platelets. So you can see that there's another platelet attaching to the first platelet through fibrinogen. This cross-linking and activation of platelet adhesion and aggregation are important components of the glycoprotein 2B3A molecule. The third component of platelet function is its release function. Now thromboxane A2 plays a very important component in the release function. ADP is released when platelets bind to damaged tissue, and ADP is another important component in platelet function. This brings us to our first drug, aspirin. Aspirin is an irreversible inhibitor of cyclooxygenase. It is used to manufacture thromboxane A2, and platelets, when you inhibit cyclooxygenase with aspirin, actually are permanently inhibited. That means that the antiplatelet function of aspirin is going to last for the entire life of this platelet, and that means that only replacement platelets will be functional, and that means that the aspirin is going to last anywhere between three and seven days. Interactions of aspirin are very important because the aspirin is going to um, interact with non steroidal anti inflammatory pain agents. They impair platelet function on their own, and when combined with aspirin, you actually have an enhanced antiplatelet effect. The next group of drugs that I want to talk about are the glycoprotein 2B3A inhibitors. We've already spoken about GP2B3A before, and we've illustrated how important it is in platelet adhesion and aggregation. So we have reduced adhesion with the 2B3A inhibitors, and we have reduced platelet aggregation. These are the drugs that are commonly used in this drug class. You don't need to know them so much as you need to know that they're used in the cath lab to inhibit platelet aggregation after catheterization. The ADP inhibitors are another drug class. You need to know this for your exam, so pay close attention, okay? Clopridogrel and prazugel are the two drugs that we're using right now in, in clinical practice. They require hepatic conversion to be active, so they don't act right away. They take some time to actually work. They are also irreversibly inhibitive of platelet function. There are some new drugs that have come out. Ticagrelor or Brulanta is a very commonly used drug in the cath lab. It does not require hepatic activation, and it is a reversible inhibitor of ADP receptors. So Ticagrelor is a reversible inhibitor. Clopidogrel and Prazugel are not reversible. They are irreversible drugs. It's really important. I want you to remember the distinction between the two because guaranteed I'm going to put it on an exam. Let's talk about the next class of drugs. Dipyridamol is a very commonly used agent that has a dual mechanism of action. The first action is that it inhibits phosphodiesterase. That reduces cyclic AMP mediated degradation, and cyclic AMP is an inhibitor of platelet aggregation. So there's a double negative there. Pay attention. More cyclic AMP means less platelet aggregation. So in other words, these drugs inhibit platelet aggregation. The second effect of this class of drugs is that it inhibits the uptake of adenosine. So it increases your plasma concentration of adenosine. Adenosine acts through that A2 receptor on the platelet surface, and the A2 receptor activation causes increases in plasma cyclic AMP levels. Once again, more cyclic AMP means less platelet aggregation, so we have less platelet aggregation through adenosine-mediated action. So this brings us to the actual uses in clinical practice. Aspirin is the most commonly used antiplatelet that we have. It reduces heart attacks. An aspirin a day keeps the cardiologist away. It also reduces stroke, so we use it all the time in preventing stroke activity. And it reduces peripheral arterial ischemia, so the three areas are heart, brain, and the legs, or peripheral arterial supply. 
The um, direct inhibitors also prevent restenosis after angioplasty. It's used in acute coronary syndrome. We spoke about clopidogrel. Remember that it's an irreversible inhibitor. It prevents TIAs or mini strokes. It prevents strokes and it reduces restenosis of stents. So a lot of time we will use clopidogrel or prazigel for about a year after we put in a drug eluting stent. Dipyridamol is often, often used in combination. We sometimes use it as, as an adjunct to warfarin in patients who have, have, who have artificial mechanical heart valves. And we use it in combination with aspirin for secondary prevention of stroke. So the thing that you want to remember is that if a person has a stroke, we give them aspirin. If a person on aspirin has a stroke, we give them aspirin plus dipyridamol, or we switch them to one of the other drugs. And finally, um, there's a new drug that's out on the market that is used to treat intermittent claudication. In terms of the toxicity of these drugs, um, they're, they're not insignificant. So aspirin has a bleeding of rate of about 0.3% or 3 per 1,000. Uh, Ticlopidine has a bleeding rate of about 5%, but a 1% rate of severe neutropenia. Ticlopidine is a drug that you only need to know because we don't use it anymore. So thrombocytic penic thrombotic purpura is a rare complication. Severe neutropenia is a common complication at 1%. On your exams, they're gonna talk about the side effects of this drug, but in real world clinical practice, we don't use this drug anymore. We spoke a bit about the direct inhibitors. The side effects, of course, are bleeding and thrombocytopenia with chronic use. We only use these drugs short term, so it's not as much of an issue with it. Clopidogrel, the bleeding rate is less than 1%. It is certainly, it is certainly present, and when you combine clopidogrel and aspirin together, the bleeding rate increases. Dipyridamol is that adjunctive drug that we were talking about. It adds between 1% and 2% bleeding risk to your drug that already has a bleeding risk. And then in terms of the uh, peripheral uh, drugs, they are contraindicated in heart failure. This is going to be on your exams. Know this. This particular drug, it is contraindicated in heart failure. 